Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, at this time I'd like to call to order the Emerald Park Landfill Standing Committee at 5.04 p.m. Would the secretary please read the roll? Sure. Emily Smith? Here. Patrick Murray? Here. Mark Slocum? Here. Michael Colling? Here. Harvey Switzer? Here. Uh, Alderman Madden? Here. Greg Burmeister? Here. Roland Kiefer? Here. Uh, Mike Hackney? Here. Joe Spear Jr.? Here. Scott Krieger? Here for recording secretary. And there's a guest signing sheet that's going around, so if any guests, please sign in. And Scott? Mayor's here. Oh, what? I'm Mayor Shabbat. I'm a guest. Sir, everybody. Is it, I know, but what? That's all right. We still want to You still get billing. You still get billing. Whoa. <laughs> you get billing. And the mayor's here as well. Until April. April. Just <laughs> <laughs> <Don't wait>. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm a nobody. <laughs> Statement of public notice. The, the meeting was posted in accordance with Wisconsin Open Meeting Laws. Approval of the minutes of the October 7th, 2019 meeting. So approved. <laughs> okay, I got second. a first and a second here. Boom, boom. Corrections, addition, discussion. Upon hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes are accepted unanimously. Open forum. At this time, we have an open forum for visitors to talk about issues that they have on their minds. There will also be an open forum at the end of the meeting to talk about what we have discussed during this meeting. And if anyone would like to speak now, you're more than welcome. I'll wait till the end. Yep, Thank no you. problem. Okay. Compliance officer report. Oh, my apologies. Uh, I am finishing up with the our annual report that I put together of all the audits done and so on, and the uh, package it together with you know odor complaints and so on, total number of odors, and issues that are done. Uh, we've done one audit so far in 2020, and we recorded the improvements that have been done. Uh, nine new wells were completed at the time I was here, one of which was connected. Um, and there wasn't, an, there wasn't a measurable odor off property. And other than that, I, I put together the listing of odor complaints that I've received from the city over the weekend for 19, for 2019. And everybody should have a copy. Anybody need one? And you'll notice, of course, I put it as the 2020 odor complaints, so, you know, so that I would cause confusion immediately, and thereby people would have to ask me questions. Okay, the reason for Joe putting his together is so that every member of the committee could see approximately what it contains right now, and those are complaints that would have come in from, through the city, from Eileen, through Scott, they would also have been directly to Joe. Right, yeah. And, but they are not all of them because Mike has a large list that is going to be compiled and we're going to add to it. A lot of them may be duplicate. Yep, yeah, oh, uh, definitely they will. Well, but no. I'll kind of stop there until we get to odors now. So. Okay. I just wanted to touch on that while you were doing it. Anything else? That's all I have. Wow, short. I've only been there one day this year. <laughs> Still recovering from vacation. Okay. Status of projects, clay extraction? Um, none since the last meeting. <clears throat> Do you have any scheduled? No, none at all so far. Okay. How far do you see out into the future with that? One day, one week? Generally, it's a week notice before a contractor will let us know okay. the amount of clay that they would need. Okay. When I came in tonight, there was a sweeper out on the road creating this huge dust storm. Where's all that dirt and clay coming from that's on the road? I would say it's not coming from Emerald Park. Where did you see the sweeper? It was right out front. 
by the boulevard going up and down the road. I've never had, we've never had an issue with tracking, and Joe, if we had tracked material out on 45, it would be in his office, for sure. Okay. If you come in the day, daylight, you can see it directly comes from a waste management. Okay. Both, both directions. They've lost a lot of quality in their road with the construction of the new cell, with all the equipment that went across it. So they have, what, maybe, maybe 300 feet of paved road. And then, then the remainder of the road in is, you know, crushed, crushed stone and clay. And then they come back out. And so they pick up a lot on that. They've got a couple tracking pads, and they showed me what they're purchasing to take care of the additional tracking today. Um, I don't know why Travis was doing the, the, the broom at this hour, because we talked to him, we being the committee and myself, about the fact that it has no water. So therefore, it does make a huge dust cloud. And it, at this hour, you know, it's like driving, driving in the fog in the dark. Yeah, it reflects off headlights. Yeah. And yeah. I know I've got a notice to, to talk to him. And today we did an audit of, of waste management. And on it, we definitely pointed out that there's tracking at the... So the you're entrance. meeting with them this week or tomorrow? Tonight. Tonight yet? Well, please bring it up. Household hazardous waste. Um, I don't have the typical printed report. Apologies for that. I had to make a quick exit at work. Yes. Are we allowed to throw a party? <laughs> yeah, th this, is, this is really good. She's not ready with the report, so what does she use for an excuse? A bomb scare. <laughs> yes. So, um, however, so I can get that out, um, but ne it only went up through November, so per the usual, I would have the final report next meeting anyway. Um, as of the end of November, we were about $2,000 over budget for the program for the year. Um, December prices are typically fairly low because we only leave one site open. So, um, and the department was able to absorb and figure that out. So. Great. That's all I got. You're excused. <laughs> MMSD? Uh, currently, I believe we're not delivering any gas because we have an oxygen problem, but we're burning all the gas that we can, would have been delivering to them and or to the floor. But prior to that, midway through December, we were delivering everything they wanted and burning the remainder. Which was about half and half, right? It was. It was half and half grand total of 2,300 CFM. They were taking around 1,100, and we were burning 1,200. Is that normal? It has been lately. It's, it's been a while since they've taken all the gas that we could deliver. I think hmm. Scott you know, had a conversation with him a while back. I had to verify that. I had a conversation um, with Pat. Pat is over off. Yeah, that's over off. He is the project manager for MMSD. Um, I did pass it on to Joe and I think Eileen. Um, they gave me the report of how much percentage that they've been doing each month. So Joe has that report that he can pass on to you guys. And it shows sometimes they take as much as like in January of last year, 86%. That's That was one point. Um, but it clearly when uh, month of November, you <laughs> said your part of the place was down, here, it was down to 15%, just to kind of give you that variety of what it is. And does that explain the size of the flame out there? It does, in a, in a way. I don't know if you can tell the difference, 500 CFM one way or the other, but 1,000 CFM, yeah. you'll be able to tell. Mm -hmm. Barometric pressure and the humidity make a huge difference, too. Uh -huh. So when the pressure's down, the flare is going to be bigger. Mm -hmm. And when the humidity's in the air, we see more of the flame. So there's there's... The size, like Mike said, the size itself is really hard to judge. When you double what normally is coming out, you'll definitely see it. But tonight, uh, the barometric pressure is down, so the flare is much bigger, too, for that. If we had a higher pressure, we'd have a smaller flare. And that, that again, that could be confusing. Yeah, it certainly is bigger than it <laughs> typically is. Okay, yeah. but you've got to realize there's two flares out there, not one, two. Would you well, explain there, that, there, please? There's the candlestick that you see, and then there's an enclosed flare. 
Yeah. Which is always burning. It's about 100 CFM on average, always burning, and that's undeliverable gas. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not. It doesn't qualify to send down the pipeline. So it's always burning that, and that's 100 CFM. Continue. And that's not an exposed to flame. Well, you'll see it pop out. The you'll see it pop. Oh, it, it, it doesn't have it a lid. It shouldn't. It should be enclosed. I got you. That's why you have enclosed. Mm -hmm. And that's in the back of this building? It's right here. It's oh. the little whitish Just tower. It's the little one. You'll see oh, okay. the flame pop out every once in a while. Okay. Pressure relief. Pretty much. Electronic recycling. Busy. Yeah, people buy a lot of TVs. Oh, it's Christmas, sure. <laughs> and they're cheap. No, I mean you're wrong. And they're cheap. Yeah, they are. So you don't fix the old ones. We fill that container every week. Or not us, but the community fills it every week. And it's picked up every week. It's picked up every week. But it's still often overflowing. It's that yeah. it's that much of a drop off. You put another container in there, they <laughs> fill them up. <laughs> three of them, they fill three. So. Okay. When those come in, do we keep track of where they're coming from? No. No. I mean, no, we don't. We take everybody's name and license plate, but what they have in their vehicle or on their trailer, we don't. We don't track. Your thoughts on that again, Harvey? Reason oh, that you'd want so much, I just can't believe that. That's really, that much comes out of <clears throat> Muskego. Oh, some of our houses have one in every room. I know, and you, yeah. you see all the people yeah. loading up the <laughs> stuff at Best Buy on, on TV. It's amazing. Yeah. And we haven't hit the Super Bowl yet. Yeah, yeah there's usually a spike right after the right. Super Bowl. It, I mean, that it, the amount would be consistent to what I was seeing with other programs. programs. Yeah. Anything else on electronic recycling? Residential drop-off site? <coughs> Excuse me. No, no fights? Issue. No issues. No, no issues? Fights. No fights? No arguments. Good. Well testing, well water protection area. Anything on that? Yes. Um, the 2019 program is, has been completed. 145. Uh, I'm going to uh, ask you one thing. Sure. Introduce yourself, please. Oh, sure. My name is Frank Perugini. I'm with Environmental Sampling Corporation. We do the uh, environmental monitoring for the standing committee, 35 homes around the, uh, the landfill. Um, Cards are sent out by the landfill, 145 are sent out this year with a uh, question whether or not they want the well tested, yes or no. 41 were returned of the 41, three said no, uh, and 10 of them were first time homeowners. So they went to the top of the list. So they were automatically part of the 35. Uh, the remaining uh, 25 came from, uh, nine were from last year that participated and 16 participated in the years past. Just to give you a little feel for who's partaking in this. Uh, the data has been submitted, uh, we received it, and uh, letters will be going out at the end of this week. Um, there were no exceedances or any violations uh, from any standards from the state. There were some secondary standards again, well, there was one uh, bacteria, resampled, proved positive again. We supplied the homeowner with a letter from the DNR showing them, or talking about chlorinating your well and where this might be, chloroform bacteria may be coming from. Um, 28 irons at a secondary standard, again, similar to last year. Uh, three sulfides had a little bit of uh, iron, or a sulfate, about 125. And there were two homes that had a DTEC of VOCs, but they were JFLAG at a very low level, 0 0.2524. One was methylene chloride, the other was toluene. And uh, both of those are laboratory contaminants. 
and things like that. that. Those chemicals are used in the lab, other parts of the lab, and things like that for, for extractions and things like that. But they're well below any of the standards. Standards, I think, for uh, toluene is approximately 800 is the enforcement, 800 parts per million, and for methylene chloride, 50. And these were 0 0.24, 0 0.23, something like that. So letters will be going out to them. But we're going to recommend that those two homes ask to be sampled again next year. There was no need to go back and resample them going to the exams. And so we advise them that when they get their letter, they send back the yes, and we'll put them in part of the pool. Okay. Questions? Joe? Those new homeowners, or any of those new wells, or they're just new to the property? Um, <laughs> Mike and I did a, a survey. We went out last uh, last year and just added some more homes that had popped. Up. Okay. A few of them are new oh, so, homes. So it's I'd, it's new to this. It's new to your dad. New to the program. Okay. Right. We've added some some additional homes that have been built up. Like now, what's new? Less than five years, but you know, they're relatively new. And you have that list of the ones you've added. Yes, yes, ESC does. I mean, ESC does. And and and, and we um, and you guys do. I would like to get a copy of that so that it can be at least noted on the back end of the contract. You just want the complete list. If that's how you have it, yeah. I mean, it was in Excel format, the original list. Yeah. So. By street, we organized. Yeah. Tax key, the whole bit. Okay. That it, sir? That's it. Good. Okay. If uh, if you don't have anything else, you are welcome to leave, or you welcome to stay. I think I'll leave. I have dinner plans tonight. Thank you. Sure. Plan modification issues? Um, I'm trying to think where we are with the compost relocation. Um, I don't think the department has issued one for us as of yet. One in process? Yes. Just one? Just one. Okay. And that is for relocating? The compost facility. The compost facility? And that's going where? On top of Future Parkland, the landfill. Okay. They give you any indication when, what, when, where on that? No. Nothing? Do they have they any? They have the plans. I know that. Okay. They have the plans. Do um, they have any issues, preliminary or otherwise? No, we wouldn't have went as far as we had if they had issues with it. We address it with them, have discussions with them before we go into any type of plan first. Because they may just say, no, that'll never work based on, and then give you those reasons. They apparently don't have any issues with it, so it's just a matter of them reviewing our plans and how we're going to construct that compost plan. Is that pad going to be sealed against the top of yes. the landfill? You can't remove anything but the topsoil from the top of it. So you'll have all the clay will still be in place, and I believe that's got the plastic liner over it, too. You may not have I don't know. I don't think there is, but that's clay. I think it's just a clay. I mean, it's a monofill. It's a monofill. It didn't have a plastic under, underneath it. It was just clay. Okay. Lots it's of clay. plastic over the top because had trouble with seagulls. You used to poke holes in it and put fish line in there. Yeah. So I think there's plastic of some sort on top of that. Yeah. I don't remember what that was all about, though. It's, I'd have to go back and look. When you move that, is there going to be a, a huge odor issue? Um, no, what I plan on doing is everything that's on the current pad, we would grind that all up and then put that in windrows and that would 
start your next composting operation there. And anything that comes in after we grind will go to the new pad. So it'll be all the brush, the grass, the leaves that go to the new pad, and we'll do the same there. So as we start composting the ground material, that pad will eventually be empty, the existing one. So you'll have dual operations Two. for a little bit? Yeah. So we'll grind the next day, all the trucks go over here. So no, I don't plan on moving it, Harvey, from okay. one pad to the other. Okay. So you'll just consume it right out of the one yep. pad and start the other one Start up. the other one. Mm -hmm. Property protection, sociological homes? Um, there's been no more properties um, for the property protection part of it. Sociological, I believe those checks will go out this month. Mid-month, I believe they get cut at corporate for those folks. Um, there was only one person we never got the W-2 from, and that was the Wieselman property. Yeah, they're they're in the, they've moved out. Weaselman, yeah. He's he's they're in a nursing home up north. <coughs> okay, so I So the home is empty? Yeah. It's in foreclosure. Oh. So the bank or something is sort of overseeing it? Yeah, bank in Oklahoma. Oh boy. Yeah. It's gonna be a long, ugly process. <laughs> I believe it's in a trust. It is. It's so in a trust he, in foreclosure. He's still eligible to get it. Even though he's not living there? Provided it's in a trust, he's still eligible to get sociological payments. And, and we never received the W-2. Do you know but who that, the trustees are? Are you familiar with that? Uh, his son. His son is a trustee. But they're both still alive, and it's they aren't. They have no well, still access to rights until right. But they have no rights until his parents are passed. Written. No, but the money could be used for paying for their care, care, care up there. there. Right. Despite yeah, I didn't real. I thought we had to live there. I did too. That's not the case. So I read so. the host oh. <laughs> <laughs> because they kept Funny thing, me, we're not hearing from we so I was just like, all right, let me read this again real quick. Okay. And provided it's in a trust, you will still receive it. <laughs> well, he's missed it this year regardless, right? Right. Yeah. Well, we, not... we we could make an exception based on based on the health situation, situation yeah. yes. I'll so I don't know if you can get a hold of anybody. I'll try to get a hold of him. Stop at the office, maybe. And okay. Does he? Does his son live in the area? Do you know? Uh, I'm not sure where his son lives. Okay. I just know he's in a nursing home up north. But I'll I'll get a hold of him. So has it all been cleaned up over there, or yeah. is just the outside? Yeah, <laughs> it looks a lot better though. Yes. Than oh yes, basement's full from the floor to the ceiling. Is it an attractive nuisance? Have the police said anything, or have you talked to our we've department? Been, we've been in contact with the bank for months. Get them to get in there and get it cleaned up, but they can't by law. They can't touch it until the foreclosure is complete. So yeah, there it sits. And so obviously the trustee has gotten everything else out that he yeah, wanted. He doesn't want anything to do with it. Yeah. Now is it the place for drug parties? Yeah. I don't think I think anybody'd be afraid to go in it if you saw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not even a drug party. <laughs> okay. Anything else? New business. Nothing right now. Continuing business. 
Update on odor complaints. Michael, you want to start this off? Sure. I, I've got a three page little drawings that I had put together on some of the work that we have done uh, probably over the last 18 months or so. It's three pages. Oh, oh there's two of them there, I guess. Oh. <coughs> No, I have my own. Okay. Oh, you're special. Yeah. Mike, you can sort of read up there. Made them at home. Sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I apologize for the size, so I'll project what I do on the wall. It's probably not going to be all that much better. Mm -hmm. well, what Mark had asked me to do, like this, was providing uh, a timeline of some of the things we've done dating back to May of 17. Um, so, in May of 17, we installed a 12-inch header line and added or had seven total wells drilled, six of the seven were additional. So this goes back to May of 17. Um, the 12-inch header line has, it's important to remember because it's going to go back to the drawing that I'll show you probably on that first page. Um, of a sump that we had that we had an issue with. And then in November of 18, we installed three horizontal collectors, added some air lines. Air lines go to the wells because we put pumps in the wells and the pumps extract the liquid out of the wells so that you're able to pull more gas through the well. So they water off for one reason or another. Um, and ADS takes the approach as if there's 50% of those slots where you would generally bring the gas in from is watered out, then you put a pump in. So 50% or more of the slots are underwater, a pump goes in. That's why we had an air. We also, and then in April of 2019, we did four additional wells in Seven South, which is the current filling area. Um, and then we connected to v two leachate collection lines, which are actually running through the current filling area. Um, so we co connected the vacuum to those two. And then in November of 19, we did a six inch jumper. That's on the drawing. I'll explain how we did all that. Um, to, uh, was it, the six inch jumper was installed to bypass that 12 inch, which we put back in in May of 2017 and drilled one well and added another additional well. The reason we drill wells that are existing is because they're no longer functional for a number of reasons. Either they have failed completely, they've cracked 30, 40 feet up, we can't get a pump in it, or they have so much liquid in them that you have to re-drill and get a pump in it and start pumping the water out of it. I'm just wondering if it would be helpful for you to sketch out on that whiteboard what you're talking about right now. With a well? Yes. Would that be helpful to others here? Yes. So when we drill down, this is your right hand. We drill down. It's a 36 inch um, drill rig that drills down through your garbage. And we stay. 10 feet above the bottom of the liner because the DNR doesn't want you to hit that liner and penetrate because it would defeat the purpose of the liner. So we'll drill down whatever depth that is, and it's 36 inch bore hole. Uh, but I'm going to go with a caisson well, which is what we've been doing here lately because caisson wells go in the landfill that you're always going to be filling around. So we're able to extend that up as we fill in the garden. Typical well, you don't have to do that. You just go ahead and drill down. You're going to design it somewhat the same way, but you're going to put a 20 foot stick of solid pipe at the top, and now you're just pulling the gas from that well. We have more caissons out here. I, I'm going to give you a number, probably 20 of them. And they are the ones that are constantly moving, and those are the ones that, if you have an issue with orders, are a possibility that that's where it's coming from. So, 36 inch borehole. Then you drop in an eight inch pipe. And 
That's an eight-inch plate. It's perforated. All two different depths. Well, if it's a caisson, it's perforated all the way to the top. And then we have a little top on here, and it goes down. And then this would be your gas collection pipe out here. So now that's going to the plant, coming down here. So as we're pulling the gas off, and we come up, and we're going to add more garbage to this. You want to mention about the stone? About the what? Stone. You got that center pipe oh, and that case on. This is all stone. And the reason for that, good point, is so that you're tied to 10, 10 feet above the liner, is that all of the gas is now designed to come this way as you're going up with garbage. Because this is slotted, and this has the, all the vacuum on this pipe here. And the slotted pipe is what diameter? Eight, eight inch, eight inch, eight inch okay. in diameter. Okay. So you're pulling the gas toward the top, up here to your vacuum source, and down to the plant. Now you got to raise this up again because we come in with more garbage. So what we've designed is this 36 inch borehole. We've got a 36 inch. I'm going to put this off to the side. It's 20 feet in length. So that's fitting right inside this borehole. And that eight inch is still inside here. And it's slotted all the way down to the bottom. So as we come in with garbage, we pull this 36 inch piece up. Now we've got garbage up here, whatever depth that is. So this piece is moved up and we extend the eight inch with it. The whole time, this is stone all the way down. So the the reason or the design behind all this is that if you were to on a typical well, you drill down. This is just your typical well, 36 inch borehole, eight inch pipe, slotted. There you go. And now you're up here with the garbage. This is still now. This is solid pipe. A typical well is solid pipe, and you're missing pulling gas from those depths. Follow me? With these, you're pulling the gas whatever the length of the of the well is. With these, you go solid because they don't you, you don't have this 36 inch piece here to pull up with it. It's just a solid piece of pipe. So this area could vary from you know, it could go 60 to 80 feet. And now you're not pulling any gas from that from the, from the new layer. From the newer layer, yep. And you're not putting any of those in anymore? No, we've gone, if they're going in the active, if they're going out on the outboard slope, you're going with these, because then that's just a typical. You'll have it slotted, and this will be maximum 20 feet. That's it. They go in, and they're fixed, and that's it. That's it. it. Mm -hmm. And there's no garbage going around them. Right. Yeah, you're done. You're at final grade. Yeah. If you're in the garbage area, that's the design we want. <clears throat> so you're constantly pulling it from every depth that you possibly can. Now, the problem is if you don't get a good seal here. And this has to be dirt. Otherwise, you're pulling it up and it could go out around it. Oh, you yeah. come up from around it. Is that what's going to clay in that gas now? Some of them, not all. Is that just clay, dirt? It's on-site clay. It's on-site clay, so it, it... It's not anything that comes through the gate. Okay. It's our good clay. It's our, our good clay. Good clay that we have. Mm -hmm. And then you pack that down like a collar around that thing? Yeah, you pack, you would pack it down with a backhoe bucket or whatever you need to do. Okay. When they first go in, there's a bent night seal back here. Mm -hmm. But you'll lose that as you pull it up. How frequently do you need to adjust the height of that? Um, well, we did one today. So we, we probably average, um, I would say probably three or four a month. So Depending on where we're filling, how we're moving mm -hmm. from time to time. But that's only wells that are in and around the active fill area. Yep. All the other wells, nothing, they're you in. See, they're fixed. They're done. You may be it's big black pipes. 
and they're sticking up maybe five, six feet. Those are caissons. Those are these wells. You see the gray ones, smaller, eight inch height? Those are those wells, your, your standard well, which are outside. Yep. We're not putting any more fills around those wells. I seem to have pictures. No, are you, you're basically maxed out at another 20 feet of fill, right? <coughs> or can you slip another? No, he pulls the whole thing. This, this, pulling it? this, this 36 inch piece of pipe mm -hmm. is 20 feet in length. We grab a backhoe with chains and we pull that up. Okay? And that 8 inch would be down below you now. Oh, so you can keep building on the internal 8 inch? Yes. And stone around that? And, just and then we stone going. around it, extend the 8 inch. Run it, you know, run it up to the top again and just keep repeating ourselves. But Pat. the eight inch and the Pat. stone are not being disturbed below that. See the no. little earlobes? You're adding to them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. Perfect. That's how I imagined it. Yeah. Wait, how big is this stone that you're using? It's a two inch wash stone. So it's the same type of stone that's down on your line. Mm -hmm. Same stuff. And though, if, if those get water in them, we're able to pump those up, too. just like you would a, a standard. Okay, now when you were talking about putting a pump down it and pumping it out, on that diagram, what does that mean? It's kind of messy, though. <laughs> you had to put a lot of detail on it. I got pictures, don't worry, Mike. Mm -hmm. So... When you're putting a pump in, you're, you're adding a few things up here at the top of the lid so that you can run an airline in there and you can run a discharge line up. So all you're doing is taking this lid off and you're dropping that pump down this perforated pipe. And it, wherever we say, if this, based on this height of this well, if there's liquid to this point, we'll drop the pump down in there and we'll, we'll take the liquid from there and either pump it right back into this line which will take it down and drop out before it actually comes to the plant. It doesn't come to the plant, it drops out in the tank before it comes to the plant, actually. And then they monitor this level every month. There's it's a pneumatic pump. pump. It's a pneumatic pump. There's all air for that liquid? Is there a smell to that liquid? That oh, yeah, it's, it's leaching. That's so it's it from the garbage? It's from the garbage. It came in, it's not able to get out of this sure. area. But that liquid does not get open to the atmosphere. It goes into a tank. It goes into the pipe and then into a tank. Yeah. And then it eventually goes to MMSD, to the sewage disposal plant. When did you transition to the new style? I got here in four... Team. I think that was the first year they did, 2014. Yeah, it's, it's an industry standard. Sure. If you go across the street, it'll look exactly the same. There'll be different different discussions on what the best pump is and so on. Every landfill's, you know, it, it's like any other facility, you know, they, they, they have what works best. But it's all based on this 36-inch pipe with the, it has ears on either side so you can put the pick put the chain on it mm -hmm. and a cap and the cap's bolted on so you can take it off so you can pour the stone down but I mean for the most part it is 2013 2014 everybody started going to it advanced was on the early side of things it's really effective given the fact that you know as you place the waste things get moved around the the farthest well to the right that Mike Mike drew the standard, what we used to do. When the waste when the waste shifts, that snaps, and when the waste moves, all it has to move is six inches, and it'll snap that pipe. And even though it's got the gradations and so on, it still breaks the flow, and it doesn't give you that columnar effect for drawing it out. So it's it's a poor poor one to use where you're going to be placing waste anyway. They and the go, waste and the waste does move, and so it will break those pipes. Which is why they decided to go with this, because this is a continuous little column for drawing the gas for this, 
like Joe said, has the pot potential to snap. Once it snaps, we have to redrill. You have to redrill the first style if, after it shifts over if time. If for some like, reason, but this has a little bit more leeway with, with the 36 <laughs> and all the stone oh, around sure. it. Um, if it does snap, yeah, we have to redrill. But we did nine wells. We just finished nine wells, like Joe said, over the last couple of weeks, and seven of them were redrills. They were what? Wells redrills. We redrill, redrill them because they're non-functional wells. We couldn't get the methane out anymore. But so they weren't redrilled in the exact same spot. No, you'll be 15, 10 feet, whatever, from, from the original well. Because that well, when you first drill them, supposedly they're like this. But now you've got uh, five years of garbage around them and all this, they go like this and nothing to do. Everything's moved. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Let's put like Schedule 80. Right. Schedule 80, PVC, yeah. that 8 inch. Yeah. It's all Schedule 80. The outside, 30, 36 inch, is HDP. Like the landfill. Yeah. Liner, yeah. Okay, a question. With this new design that supposedly captures all the gas, where has the smell been coming from? Uh, we'll, we'll kind of work. We'll get there. <laughs> coming attraction. To what we believe right now. We may learn more over the next few months, but what we believe right now is... Coming. To be discussed. Yeah, we'll get there. Mike has got a little more presentation to do. Got a hammer? I had a big one out in the car come to think of it. And a uh, pipe wrench. <laughs> Right. Find adjustment tools. So, um, <coughs> I want to go back to this when we put this 12 inch header on because that 12 inch header is connected to a sump. And that sump is the one we had issues with building up with liquid that we probably talked about for at least the last two um, committee meetings. So on the drawings that I sent you, this is the sum. So I'm going to do my best to describe how it was functioning or not functioning. This is all on the west side of the land. All 12 inch pipe here. This is your sump area. This runs up the side slope, a three to one slope. It goes all the way up to the top of the slope, 270 feet to the top. That's where the vacuum source is coming from. We tie into a 12 inch pipe at the top. So your vacuum is flowing in this direction, up this pipe and out to the plant. So you've got vacuum and liquid coming down this 12 inch pipe. The liquid drops out here into this sump. The vacuum continues on with all the gas going up that 270 foot three to one slope and then eventually to the plant. What we found was the amount of liquid that was coming down this pipe and going into the sump we had a pump that runs down this 12 inch. It was set right here and was pumping the liquid out. We got too much liquid. We couldn't handle the amount of liquid to get pumped out. And we were finding debris in that pipe. Mm -hmm. All kinds of debris. We don't know why. This, all this pipe gets flushed and verified that it's flushed by a consultant before they put it in place. 
what we suspect is it got hit or broke further back within the landfill because if it was anywhere along the toe of that slope, you'd see the oxygen down here. So it's got to be back, possibly somewhere back under 100 plus feet of garbage. It's the only way we can figure we're getting debris and, and the amount of liquid in it that that pump couldn't handle. So we dealt with this for three or four months at least to where we would pull the pump, we'd clean it, we'd find the debris, we'd drop it back in, it would pump for a week. But this 12 inch is tied to a number of wells on that south slope, which is all this green area or all these green lines. So the, the sump is actually down here. So that's the sump. Here's the 12 inch, the ones at the base. So here's a well, you got one well, two wells, three wells, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then there's a couple up, more up here. Yet. So there was approximately anywhere from eight to probably 10 wells that were connected to that 12 inch line. Well, because we couldn't keep the liquid out of it, it would back up. Here's the sump. This is the first well closest to the sump. It's a six inch line that comes up. This should have vacuum on it. If that sump filled up, it would back up the liquid and we'd see positive pressure at that level. Pull the pump, clean it, positive pressure on that well the next week, potentially have positive pressure all the way back to here because it would fill up with just that much liquid. We put all two different types of pumps in there to move more and more gallons out of there, and we just couldn't keep up. So we would lose vacuum to these wells that probably, I'm, I don't have the data in front of me, but I'll bet you this is all the west slope. These are all caissons. Probably gave us up to 200 CFM, which is a lot. But if you're not pulling on it, that gas is going somewhere. Remember in the beginning he said the gas flow was about 2,400 CFM. So if you've got 200 of it going somewhere, that's 10% of what's being generated by the landfill. So it is a lot. So we said the heck with this 12 inch and this sump that's been a, a problem for us. And we put this jumper line, which is the black screw blue line. So here's your sump right here. It runs up that slope, that's a slope. It ties to a 12 inch existing line that has full vacuum to it, 50, 60, 50, 60, 70 inches, whatever we we're pulling right here at the plant. It's right up here on the corner. We took this jumper line, we put it up on the surface, laid it right on the ground because of the weather conditions. And we just tied into that 12 inch line. Now, this six inch line has got 50, 60, 70 inches of vacuum on it. It's opposite way you would generally do things because you always want things to flow downhill. Um, but the liquid is still tied to each of the wells. So if you got vacuum here and that gas well is still generating liquid, these lines are all still here and it's still going to the sump. We just don't rely on the sump anymore. We bypass the sump. So instead of the vacuum coming here, now the vacuum is coming up here and it's connected to all those wells, those eight to nine wells that we had issues with. We ran it here, and this, this is all existing, so you had good vacuum going to this green line. That I thought would be, I thought that would take care of most of the older complaints that we were getting. I think it has some, but these, Next additional wells that we put in, we're hopeful will take care of a lot of the issues. When did that go active, Mike? This was in November. End of November, everything? Yeah. Okay, because we were still getting this tremendous gas odor, further actions needed to be taken past the November ones. So the landfill. Mike, through his boss, 
contracted with a, you want to let them know what that is, Mike? I didn't, geez, it's not mine. Um, the contractor? We, we, con we contracted to have a drill crew come out here and drill those nine wells that okay. just... But been. what what targeted those nine wells? What said drill a well and drill it here? Oh, we, we did a, uh, a drone flyover. So we hired a company that came out and it was a drone that had a 20-foot tail on it. And it, it was about 20 feet above the surface of the landfill and it sniffed all the gas. It sniffed anything emitting from the landfill. So any, and then they gave us a report. It says, here are the spots you need to be concerned with. They just made them red. Said, here, these are your hot spots. So based on that, we decided to go ahead and drill these nine wells and then add not only the nine wells, but we're also going to be putting in some more horizontals too. Was the horizontal the, what you just called the jumper? The horizontal is a perforated pipe that goes only about seven feet under the surface okay. of the existing, and it's perforated, and it will connect it to a vacuum line, and it will just pull okay. that gas within that seven feet of whatever surface we have, or elevation we have. And those can be thousands of feet in length. The methane wants to migrate laterally, not vertically, right? Right. It has, to, Pretty, yeah. it has to be pulled. Yeah. It well, be pulled. well least, not really. Path least resistance. If you yeah. put a yeah. pipe down, even without the vacuum, it'll move up the pipe. I mean, that's that's the benefit of the, the whole well. Water goes down, gases go up. But it'll move sideways, it'll move down. Uh, one of the reasons we have liners is to protect groundwater from the gas migration. So, but Typically, the horizontals make go on a slope. Well, and they're ablative. If you put them in the, in the waste, you once they're seven feet above, they're no longer useful. They're on a steeper slope yeah. where you can't get equipment there at all times. Okay, so this drone with this tail flew a pattern over the landfill which was computer controlled. Mm -hmm. So it didn't. It didn't miss any area. It went into the active area. Yeah. Where you, you, know, you generally do your surface scans quarterly, which we have to do according to the EPA. We, you don't scan the active area because it's too dangerous to have a guy out there walking out. Sure. All you need is one. And when did the drone fly? fly? Uh, first week of November. First or second week of November. So that told us where we were going to put these wells and horizontals. So from that flyover, you put in these nine wells. Is that correct? Correct. Which were just completed the end of last week. The wells were completed. How many have been hooked up? One. What is the anticipated date of hooking up the rest of them? They're telling me they'll be completed by January 20th. That's everything. That's the well hookups and horizontals. Okay, so by January 20th, assuming that there's no other emissions coming from other points, we should be there. And we're going to refly with the drone. Okay. Once everything is hooked up. Okay. Are you flying the rest of the mountain with the drone? Or no, the, the only reason we, we do do drone, but it's all for uh, uh, airspace numbers for us to tell us how much room we have to put more garbage. Total opposite of this drone. This drone does nothing but sniff the emissions. Mm -hmm. And that's sniffing only in cell 7? Uh, Wherever we, you program it to do. Mm -hmm. We did do cell 7 because that's where we were filling, mm -hmm. but it also did <coughs> several other cells. Okay. Pretty much anywhere where we didn't have any final cover. Mm -hmm. So it's the new areas where you're still filling that the drone detected in Aroma? Yes. Yep. 
Do you want the lights back on? I don't, you want me to get into the drip leg because that's the thing we dealt with after we took care of the sump issue. Then we had a problem with the drip leg which kind of shut off some of the vacuum on the south slope. That has now been addressed. But a drip leg is a, a trap in your sink. Same thing. If, when you're going to talk about it, yeah, you need to explain it. If it's part of the issue, we need to know about it and what you've done and what can prevent this from occurring some other location. All right, so this is the drip leg in the lamp. So uh, lights, Joe, please. Sure. I feel like I'm back in AV Club. <laughs> My job hasn't gotten any better. <laughs> so you can always hit all the lights, huh? <laughs> or reach the clock. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. So if this is a cell of the land, everything, all your clay, um, your plastic, your stone and stuff, all, it's all well lined, all documented, good to put garbage. What we, what we like, and what most companies do now, most place companies will do, is they'll put in a collection line at the top of your cell. So this is the top. So they'll run all various different sizes. Ours is 12. We'll run a 12 inch line right about here. And that'll follow the entire length of the cell. Um, so if this is your, now drawing it opposite, obviously. This is the top of your cell, and then this will be your uh, You'll have a 12-inch line that's running right through here. And it'll be pitched. Is that final cover, Mike? No, this is the okay. top of the line. All right, gotcha. Okay. I don't know, this will probably be like that. Something like that. So this is pitched so that you, it's going to drain this way at some point. Whenever you reach that low point, you put in a drip light. This is going to be really bad. But that's not good this drip light is that drawing right there. <laughs> Close it up. Get, yeah, you got a 12 inch here. This is using a 6 inch. It drops out. This comes up and grabs the 12 inch again. So, vacuums generally run in that direction. It could be running in the same direction. Your liquid's coming down, it's got to drop into this pipe. It'll fill up, so the liquid will come in. It'll fill up to this point, and that's tied to what we call a cleanup. That leachate cleanup line goes all the way down to the bottom of the landfill, which you have a sump at every low area in the landfill, and then that gets pumped out to a pump, an electric pump, and it goes to MMSD. So it's handling all of your leachate. This condensate, condensate is just the moisture off the gas, because the gas comes off the hills 100% moisture. You need a way to knock it out before you get it down every time. This is one way to do it. So the gas will the gas will come from one one way or the other. Liquid goes this way, the gas will go back and out. So it's this. Gas coming in, gas and liquid, drops out, here's your drip leg, your track, here's where it's supposed to drain, that's a clean out, that goes down to the bottom of the land. Gas up, gas out. And it just continues all the way to the top of your land. So you got high and low spots throughout. It could be a mile long. I mean, it's all going to be the same way. It's all, you, need to put, you need to drop it down. When you drop it down, you put one of these in. Now you're gradually going up, you're going up, and you're going to drop down again. It goes that way all the way along top of the land. How many drip legs do you have out there? Six. Okay. Now, what failed? This got clogged. Once it got clogged, it was no longer draining into here. Filled up, cut the vacuum off. 
I jetted it. We got it to clean out once, but you can't get jetter now. You know, jetter, our jetters that we use or that we hire to come out here is three quarter inch holes. And you got an end on it like that, and it won't go past this. Most jetter companies say, well, I can go smaller nozzle, but I'm not going to get my hose stuck. I get my hose stuck, you're buying it all. I said, I'll buy all your hose stuff here. You know, we need to get this thing cleaned up. So we've done that several times. And it's a, we don't know what we're really moving in here. And we're actually moving that, whatever it is, it's a solid of some sort. Who knows? It's going down into your landfill. Now you're having to try to pump it out. You can't even pump it out with the pump that we have down in the sun. So we took a pump and dropped it down. <laughs> we took a pump and dropped it down where the liquid is supposed to go. So we took a pump and dropped it down in here, and now we're pumping the liquid out. Which is keeping this free of vacuum and this free of vacuum. So that is still plugged up underneath? It's still plugged up. Plugged up on the very bottom. Very yeah. bottom. Somewhere yeah. in here. Somewhere in there. We have a design to run a jumper around this whole thing, a 12-inch pipe, big pipe, but that's several months. So this is our quick fix. The side slope riser is still working though, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. So we're still pumping the liquid that's getting down to the engine collection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's because one of them or is it all of them? No, no. This is the only one we've got to shoot out of the six. How do you know when they're working properly? It should have, if you, a drip label will have a positive and a negative side to it. So this side should always be negative because your, your vacuum's coming from here, your liquid's dropping out. So this should be negative. This side, you should have your liquid seal, this should always be positive. And that's the only way we know how they're working. Are they inspected on a regular basis? Yes. <laughs> because we can have, they can go dry. Sure. And when they go dry, all of a sudden we see oxygen down here. And then we got to go out there, and if this is negative, fine. If that's negative, not good. So we put water in it, and we'll fill it. How often, to answer the question, is it inspected or verified that it's working correctly? When you have an issue. This one we're watching every day. So is okay. the issue something that you guys notice, or is it because you guys get complaints from no, residents. No, we'll notice. Okay. We'll notice. They lose several hundred CFM that. from the system if it if it if the vacuum drops. You tell them how they know how you notice it. Uh, either notice oxygen it. will appear down here for one reason or another. And or we lose flow because now this is getting blocked off. And this could be attached to 10, 5, 15 wells, this vacuum line. Well, that's and all of a sudden the vacuum starts, or our flows will just start creeping down every day, a little bit, you know. Sure. And then you get out there and you start looking at this or and or other things that we have. How far from the surface is the bottom of that trap? This is down on the side slope of, of your cell. So it can be, this one in particular, about 13 feet down. And your use called out as a three to one, so thirteen times three. Show him roughly on that Six. other Six. one with, that Six. has your side slope. Show him roughly where you're talking about the positioning of it. So, if this, if this what do you want? This elevation of where this drip leg would be? Yes. Like that? Please. This particular one that we had problems with is like, like I said, it's thirteen feet down that we know this elbow is at. Now, it's laying sideways on the slope. It's not like this, it's like right. this. So 13 times, it's just, well, it's a four to one slope. Then we're the four to one slope. So it's 13 times four will give you this depth. So we take the pump, we know where to stop. We know where to drop it to. And as long as it's pumping, we got back. So you're monitoring that somewhere. You're monitoring the pump. Yeah. Okay, you're, the, the that's pump is a, is a pump. It's an electronic pump that says, "All right, I'm going to turn on every two minutes. I'm going to pump that liquid down, and as I, as the liquid, we vacate that area of liquid. The bolts go or the amps go up on the pump, shuts it off. Then it's going to check it another two minutes. 
If there's liquid there, it's going to pump it. If there's no liquid there... But are you monitoring this going on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here's a control panel. So we got a control panel. Okay. Okay. That's what that's on. Okay. okay. But that new pump with the control panel is relatively new, is it not? Yeah, that particular type pump style is new. Yep. As of November-ish? No, that's the one we have in the sump, too. I mean, you put them in, put the new control panel in recently, did you not? Yes. Yeah, this, when, when, did you, trip leg when did you bypass the, the trap in the trip leg? I think that's well, what he's asking. Okay. So pretty much everything is happening in November till month. We did the flyover, we found the drip leg issue. That is the new pump. Right, other than everything that we did the several months that we're dealing with some. Yes. Because I, it's supposed to be a complete loop all the way around the land for the back. You fix one part, and all of a sudden you have another issue. Why? Because something's moving someplace and letting waste. Debris as this is on, Mike this refers to it into the pipe. There's not even any more filling up over the top of that. I mean, it's by five east, which is in cell five. Okay. So it's two thousand four. Which also three. means to do any real repair, you have to cut the cap, you and you don't want to do that. We're going to jump this thing because it's way. It's the better thing to do. It, it's under because now you're digging up 52 feet. Yeah, you want to dig up 52 feet of old garbage? Yeah, that'll. He had orders before. Yeah. Well, I sure appreciate the information. That was great. I hope I didn't confuse you. No, no, no. 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 You explained it quite well. Yeah. There's some total of all that we should see some improvement. Man, I hope so. Okay. okay. But it's really By the end of January. Yeah, <coughs> that's correct. Well, you, you should go into the, the ramping up effect too. Because no, I I, yeah. I I don't like to misrepresent the landfill. When you say January twentieth, that's when you're guaranteed to be all reconnected. But you're only going to be pulling well, a portion. Guaranteed. That's when your contractor says. But at that point, I your new wells are only going to be lips are only going to be pulling a percentage of the total vacuum at that time. You still have to develop those new wells. Yeah, we it's not you don't throw a switch. An actual, and, a standard operating procedure on wells as you bring them online, you could you know you leave them at static conditions, then you put an inch of vacuum on them, two inches, and you're testing, you know, so inch one day, another inch the next day, and I tell my guys get aggressive on the second, third day. And start opening them up. So, because you don't want to draw in too much oxygen in them, they're, they're new. So, so you if you pull in too much oxygen on a new well, then what do you have to do to fix that? You have to turn that well down. Well, it depends turn on how down, much. But don't you somehow recompact it, or it's pulling air from somewhere? That's why you have to be careful. Yeah, you gotta ease your. That's why they want us to ease our way in. No, no. If you do have, if you do have too much oxygen and you can't recover that well, you will look to put more clay around it, more betonite around it, anything you can. I've done visqueen around wells and then put clay on top. I've done activated carbon, put them around caissons and then put clay on top. Everything I could think of to seal them up. Mm. And if you pull too much oxygen, you'll kill the methanogenic bacteria. If you do that, now you've got an aerobic condition in part of your landfill, and you have to wait for it to flop back over. And if you've got the well there, the well just holds air. So it, you can't. You got to have it out of the out of the vacuum system, but you have to make sure it can't fill with atmospheric oxygen, or you never get your anaerobic conditions back. So you've got one portion of your landfill that just generates odors. So that's the other thing. They can't they can't over pull. And then have to do corrective action on that. So they have to keep that. That's why it's the slow process, because if you do blow it, it is really a big issue. 
what are we talking about? You're saying January now. Is it is the slow progress? Is this going to be March or February 15th, March 15th, or April 1st? If, every, if everything is hooked up by the 20th, I think by the end of that's 10 days that we have to get to full vacuum. To get some good vacuum. I mean, I'm not saying an inch or two, that's nothing. No. You need to get 10, 15, 20 inches if the well will take it. If the well will take it. You can be at 20, 30 inches by the end of the month. And then you look at, the, that doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is what kind of gas flow are you getting off that well. That's all that matters to me. Mm -hmm. I don't care if there's 50 inches on it. If you're only getting five inches, or if you're getting five uh, CFM off it, you've got an issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Any End of January would be a pretty good guess. So we'll be patient. I think you've been very patient. Anyway. I put that timeline together because I want you folks to know that you know, it's not like we've been Right, right. Nothing. Yeah. You know, I mean, I get it. It's I'm here every day. It smells. It's sm worse than I've ever had. Yeah, I would say. And I was right across the street for thirty, so I know yeah. it, it is the worst it's ever been here. But we're we're gonna fix it. Now, if we get to end of January and we can't see. Okay. At what point in time are you expecting to run another flyover? Another Jones flyover? It will be February sometime. Okay. Does that co coincide with your next required surface scan, or that's when you guys plan to do it? That we're just going to do it. As soon as we know that we've got adequate vacuum and everything that we know we just did. Can we find out the results of that flyover before the I, next? I, uh, I, I can ask my supervisor yeah, if they're willing to share that information. I have most yes, of yes, that information will be shared. Yes, there's just no question. Because that's part of the issue is here. Mm -hmm. We need to know what that is. If that's, you know, huge gaping leaks someplace, more action has to be taken. Agreed. Jesus, we'll be on on Thursday. Of this week? Yep. Mike? Are these problems that are normal in landfills? Is this hap has happened some other places also? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's just the age of the landfill. Uh, is that what what's happening? Or well, the age of the landfill is always going to be an issue because the older the landfill, until you get close to it being closed for an extended period of time, is when it's going to produce the most. Okay. So the the gas curve has a big oh, big right. bell, that's, that's what I'm and asking. then it extends out. It okay. peters out. So Mike is at the, at the right opportunity for the deodorants and so on. And also for as much grief as we've been giving him, here, huh? this, this landfill hasn't had the issues that a lot of landfills have. Okay. Um, you know, across the street had its big, big, big problems in 2005, and that turned out that the operators weren't putting daily cover on. Uh -huh. So, I mean, it, it doesn't, 200 CFM is a lot of well, landfill gas to be exposed to. And we've evolved so that the... The, the sensory organ, the the smells of decaying flesh that we call putrescine cadaverine, the smell that's in landfill gas, hits our brainstem. We we can detect it at very very fine levels, so that we don't eat it. You know, it's this it's the self preservation thing. So it's surprisingly small amounts in the air that we actually pick up. Now, of course, obviously, the worse the odor, the greater the volume. What about the Scott the people who complain that are so far away from here that can't. Be related, can it? Yes. You can? Yep. I think it's got a lot to do with 
the weather that day. Uh, if you've got a heavy ceiling, it stays a little, it'll travel a little further rather than rising. And that's where I seem to, where I always got any calls was a day like that, you know, where you had a heavy ceiling. Yeah. Wind direction. Yeah, yeah and wind, wind direction, direction, of course. We don't get it much, but if you have fog, and then, you know, on the East Coast, landfills stink several miles away because fog just holds it to the ground it and, it, and it lets it freely move like by diffusion. It was a couple of weeks ago I called Mike. I came to City Hall, which is pretty far away. It was one of those days where we're getting some warm days, cold at night. There was a layer of fog that probably was over almost all of City Mosquito, right around 7.30 to 8 o'clock in the morning. I came out of this, I came to City Hall. I'm like, that's landfill. Brought a couple of people to go out, and I'm like, yep, that's landfill. And that's when I called Mike up and just to see what it is. But as soon as the sun came out, it's gone. It dissipated the, the fog, and then the smell yeah. goes away. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Now, one other thing, and I just always like to be people let people know, right now, we have a pile of leaves at DPW that's beginning to be grinded up. And if you go out and smell that right now, it's a very distinctive, different smell, but it started today. It's and then it's composing, and it's more of that, or, or can It doesn't smell good. Yeah, no. and, it, and it's pretty strong today, because mm -hmm. we just started doing the grinding. But you know, a couple weeks ago, you can tell when that fog, you can see the mosquitoes low, and that fog layer is across the whole thing, it tends to keep that, that yeah. smell in. And it's in, just in the morning. Once the sun comes out, the space Absolutely. It goes away. Yeah. Yeah. Th this is, to answer your question, this, this year is really the first year that we've had odors traveling miles away from the landfill. Mm -hmm. We've had them on occasion you know, a couple, three years ago, they might go a mile, but that took the right weather conditions, you know, just perfect. Springtime, you would get those, that just right conditions. But this last year has been a disaster, no question about it. Now, it is not just this landfill. The one across the street also has odor emissions, but I would say right now, we, our emissions are much stronger than theirs. So we need to really get this one under control before we can even start to get involved with the other side of the street. Now I am talking with their chair of their committee and he is becoming very active on at least trying to monitor emissions and where they're coming from. And I think that after sometime end of January, beginning of February, in terms of his monitoring, he is supposed to determine where, the, where it's coming from. It makes no difference, whether it's across the street, whether it's here, he is going to try to determine where that is. And I suspect that it's happening right now. Their odor inspector, if you want to call it that. And I think we're going to see that drop off tremendously after these wells are in and have worked themselves in. But we won't know. It's going to take some time to see. Because I had tremendous hopes on the November ones doing great things you know, at least a 50% reduction. And I don't think we got a 5% reduction out of those. I agree. Aren't they doing the same thing across the street? Their issues aren't quite the same right now. Okay. Ours overpower theirs. Oh, okay. So we got to get rid of ours and we can find out what they're contributing. Then it will, yeah, but see, they want to clean theirs up too. Right. But right now, because ours are such a high level, it makes it really difficult okay. for them to get in and control. All right. How are you able to determine that it's this side versus the other side? Follow the smell. I was going to say, yeah, when the wind's really blowing, west, <laughs> blowing out of the west, it's easy. <clears throat> and when they stopped taking auto flip before you started as manager, right? They never took No, no, here. When you, yeah. the, the, the auto fluff had ceased. Yeah. 
So they used to have a daily cupboard called auto fluff, which is they shred up the car and they take all the metals out. It had its own distinct odor. And it, so if, if, if that odor was picked up, you would smell that along with the landfill odor. It didn't necessarily mean it was this landfill's odor that you smelled, mm -hmm. but at least the wind was going the right direction it could be. And that is what I used for a number of years. So the, but now it really comes down to, you know, how strong is it? There's, their wastes are similar enough. You're not gonna have that much difference in odor. So um, when, uh, when was it that your plant was down? Was that September? This one? Yeah. That was that was late September, right? For the swap? Or the when you H2S oh, or sure. you, oh, you've got hit by lightning. lightning. Oh, man. Uh, July. Uh, anyway, so the same time they were hit by lightning yeah. over here, across the street was putting the cap on on one of their cells, the what's called the Clearwater Pond expansion, the one on 112th. They also had disconnected all their wells to put the cap on. They have to boot everything. So the odors in the area were with lack lack of definition tremendous oh yeah and but it was definitely both sites and it just i, I don't think there was any pre-planning mike got a lightning strike and they were already going to do it i mean they they have to take the wells offline to put the cap on so there was one particularly bad weekend then but normally it's pretty easy to tell by a little drive around mm -hmm. yeah with roads all the way around them it yeah. works pretty well <clears throat> yeah Other questions, thoughts? Okay, one of the things that I sent out an email asking for, uh, and this is really being driven by Harvey, and he has volunteered to take this project on, and that's to maintain a line of communication with the people that have filed complaints about odor and to let them know what is happening, what we're doing here. When I say we, I don't mean the committee is out there with a shovel and trying to do something. I'm talking about the committee in conjunction with the landfill and the whole purpose is to communicate to the residents of the area, what activities are going on and what you should expect, but also that we would like to continuously be informed of what they observe, odors or no odors. Well, obviously, they're not going to let us know if it's an odor-free day. You know, that goes away pretty quick. But when they have odors, they will let us know. And that should prove helpful. But by letting them know what we're doing here, it should give them a sense that we're not ignoring what they're communicating to us. Right. So we've got some lists that we're starting to get together now. Mike will get his generated he's got a lot more generation work to do because his are in single pieces of paper if you want to call it that for each complaint but he also contains a lot more information because his will have the temperature on the day the wind direction the barometric pressure all kinds of information that mike has in terms of the complaints, what the conditions were when the complaints were made. What is yes. the preferred way to communicate um, a complaint? Who should I be calling? Or who should I, do I email somebody, do I call somebody? What? First of all, I, emailing, I, as far as I'm concerned, is preferred because now... To whom? Okay. God, I hate to raise my hand on this. <laughs> well, the... Your established policy, well, policy that goes back right. to I know. 20 years is to contact the clerk. But don't, let me tell you, the clerk doesn't have any record of any odor complaint. Because she sends it to Scott. All the, all the complaints that go to the clerk through email go to me. Right. They automatically send it to me. I automatically send it to Copy Joe, and I leave right away. So but that... 
Again, Scott doesn't keep them. Eileen doesn't keep them. Joe them. may keep them, but Joe is not a permanent fixture. We went to Scott. But Joe is. He's hoping to be Well, right. yes. But. Is there something? You know that, did you, Joe? <laughs> Joe. I guess I'm shorter lived than I realized. As far as I can hope, I, I, am, I am as permanent as I'm going to be. You don't have a fear right now. Right. But it is not a good business practice for us as a committee, for us as a community to rely on a contractor to keep our records. I agree. No. Nothing personal. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> well, until this year, like last year, I've got, I've, I've got complaints going back to 99. I mean, mm -hmm. JSA has been auditing the landfill for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time that odor has been more, has been discussed at more than one meeting. And it's the first time we've had odor complaints that we've actually got to talk about. Normally it's a statement I make at the end. I give the landfill manager a hard time because they didn't use anything to control odors during the year, during the one or two times it was noted. And then when I record it for when I'm out here, that's not a complaint. It's an operational ob observation. Right. But unless the committee says, oh, we, we don't want to see odors when, when it's audited, we, we don't carry it any, for, any further forward. So I count a number of emails when I gave my first response for the odors. Um, but when I actually did them up, I think it's like 97. Uh, and then we've, we've never received that kind of level of complaints before. And so I've never been concerned about the record keeping. So it seems like we would have to update the policy first off. But could the policy change be as simple as either having you report out and turn them over? Or when you send them at a CC to the committee so that then the committee can keep them too? Could, I mean, could it be that simple of a well, Who's going to start a committee? Base? Committees can change no matter what. What the person is, who's supposed to sort? Is Mark supposed to sort or Eileen? Mm -hmm. so the, the best thing to do is you have city files. Mm -hmm. You create a folder. You put it in there to complaints. You just list them all in there. They'll never go away. It's always backed up. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not going to have an issue. I was going right. to say, if you want to follow the other committee, the complaint goes to the landfill because it's not going to change. Their responsibility isn't going to change. And the landfill has a relationship with the committee, so they get a copy. So that's, the, that's, the those landfill are like the should two get options. a copy, but they should not be the custodian of that record. Okay. That cus the custodian of that record should either be with the committee or the host community, one or the other. I would say or both. It, it'd have to be the host community because how long are we going to be around, Mark? Oh, I don't know, another 20 minutes. <laughs> that <laughs> <That's> long? <laughs> I sometimes you know wonder. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an idea like he says, the committee can change, you know. But to answer, members are all replaceable. I, yeah, and they're going to need to be, okay? I mean, I'm in my 70s. I'm not going to be here forever. No, nah, you're just a young puppy. So, yeah. well, so can I'm I glad I'm the only one out for it update the policy to instruct Scott to start saving off a copy for records? Does that need well, to be popped up? We would have to do it for a copy that we're going to keep. Right now, Eileen gets complaints, Mike gets complaints, Scott gets complaints, Joe gets complaints. Mm -hmm. How do we get that to one document? So it all would need to then be funneled to the clerk. You just gotta, yeah. The clerk until somebody spends a tremendous amount of time, they're not going to do anything with it. It's not going to be anything usable. Yeah, they can take it and put it in a file or in a box, but that's not going to help us as a committee. The other option would be to do a digital solution where you would create an input form that anyone would have access to, like in a Google form, where it would take where it would be drop downs and everyone would have the email address or the web address and you could just that's go in and input. That's always more like, I see where it would be good from an organization standpoint, but it would be a deterrent to me. Yeah. No, I wasn't saying for the, I meant for. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> then we're good. You guys can do all the paperwork. You <laughs> but to answer your question, do you hold the city clerk? Yes. Yeah, okay. Clerk. For the short term. Okay. Address oh, your you know. issue. Yeah. Wind direction, you, basic weather conditions. You can email me because for the short term, 
we're, I'm going to be working with Scott. I'm going to be working with Hardy. And we will come up with a permanent system. It may be mean sitting down with the clerk. Every, Something. Every complaint that I've gotten, I have a folder. And I have stored it in a folder. So I don't like... I store been... everything. In, I, I store so many folders. I what do you guys do with the complaints then? Though? Yeah. Well, what like do you do with it? If a folder, how are you acting? Well, that well that's what we're going to change so the, right the now. Issue, the issue okay. that has been is... And just to kind of give you an idea, I've only been here about two and a half years. The first year and a half, one maybe complaint. The, the last year or, or, or nine months, whatever, all the complaints have happened. So what are we doing? Okay, we're having these meetings. Mike has come up with a plan. This is a game plan to, to, to do this work. Sure. Hopefully by the end of February, we see some progress. If not, Mike goes back, figures out another plan. To, to do it. So this complaint, I know it's just been real recent though. I mean, in the long picture of how long the landfill has been around. So as anything, we have to have Mike, the person who's running the, the, the landfill, the time to react and, and do this project. So what if, I know that don't, you only need four times a year, so what if you just bring that list to every yeah. meeting yeah. Or, and then Obviously, if there's significant problems in between, you're going to act on it sooner. I mean, isn't that the simplest thing? Sure. It's was, not uh, that Mike's not acting on it. it. It's just that the meeting's only four right. times. I mean, you yeah. submitting, if, if you see it's yeah. piling up a lot. And One of the things sooner. that we didn't get to, I think will answer most of the questions. My wanting to, to get all the older complaints together is in November, the landfill was active in trying to, or proactive in trying to resolve the issue. The committee didn't know that, and the citizens didn't know it. And so we got a, we went kind of over Mike's head to, to get some answers, and when we got those answers, they were already here at, at this landfill. They already did the flyover. They already knew they were going to put in nine wells. But none of us knew that. So my thought is, if I could get with Mike, Scott, and Joel, and Mark to just kind of talk over what's going to actually be going on. You know, we're going to do another flyover in, in January slash February. We should know that. We can send out to the people that have signed up as complaints and we have an email address with, and we can tell them this is what we're going to try and do. You know, if, if everybody on these lists would have known that we're drilling new wells, we could have given them some vague information, but you're going to experience more odor because we're digging into the old garbage. Would have eliminated some unhappy campers because it went from bad at deer hunting to terrible by Christmas. Well, yeah, because we're, we're digging in a landfill. We didn't but we didn't know that. Having that information would definitely help. Yeah, it's me, I mean, I, I issue a lot of complaints. I get no response. So I guess my logic was it just falls on deaf ears. If I, I started coming to these meetings a year ago, they're extremely helpful for me to help understand, but if I wasn't coming to these meetings, I'd be extremely irritated mm -hmm. for the lack of response. You keep emailing and emailing and just keep being told to keep complaining, but you don't hear any response. That's, that's well, we don't know that. See, we didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that's why I started calling well, people. We, we, we knew the driver was complaining. Pardon me? That should be. I'll show you a thousand little fact of complaints. Yeah. But if you look at these, yeah. these are complaints from last year. Uh huh. But typically, okay. if, Ryan and I if it's going to be a response right. from the city clerk, not very many. People, people are going to quit doing it because the city clerk can't do it. Okay. But well, informed response. No, I mean, an so it would need to be right. an informed response. Yeah. It's going to have to be. It has to be That should be another part of the. Uh, but that's what we only had five minutes. Well, that's right. Yeah. That's, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's yeah. what I'm saying. I mean, I was not the least complaining. I got to get over to Franklin at the same conversation. I have some excuses. Okay. I guess. Okay. I guess. Here's who else is complaining. I looked. I wanted to look at the list because my interest was. Talk to Steve. From Lowers. Japanese Village. Oh, never mind. I went to the full meeting and I, I asked specifically last week. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Does anybody have a 
have a problem with voters. Do you have a problem with anything I share? Just, no. Do I need to be really? concerned? Yeah. yeah. Everything we've talked about here. Sure. It's it's open I, I'm just making sure. Right, but All right. see, nobody. I'll, thank you. Nobody. I brought it up. Touch base when you have a question or something like that. Hey, you made a meeting with someone else. You know, uh, <laughs> okay, do we, but yeah, but I'm going to charge it to Franklin. Hey, I got to get over there. Way, way up up on the hill, close to six thirty. Yeah. but on uh, the second thing on the agenda. South, right. so east corner yeah. of the or northeast corner of the subdivision. But but I'm way closer than that. Are you? Are you did you want to go over there too? I've, I've never, it's never been overwhelming. This, sure, but I've yeah. got orders okay. I know of. So I'll stop over. I know, and I know, kind of knew that he's working on it. Do you want me to explain it real quick? Have we no newsletter that we could get? Well, going to talk about the fire department first. Excuse me. Right. Take off. Need your attention for a minute. So I, I've asked to be excused because I've got to go and talk in front of the Common Council at the City of Franklin. So. Same issue. Right. Well, it turns out we've got 100 some odors, uh, odor complaints. Franklin claims that they've been collecting the odor complaints that should have been coming here. And it's an election year. And unlike, unlike our mayor, Mr. Olson planned sticking around, so he's making it a big deal to figure out how to fix the odors and so on. And there's also a, a sewer problem. So I am going to stand up and talk with waste management. Waste management is going to explain what they've done to control their odors. And like I said, they've, they've had their odors this year too. And I'm going to explain what the city does to protect the, the citizens with the auditing and so on. And if asked, I can answer questions of what's happening here. That's why I was double checking with Mark is that, you know, this is all under the, the open records and so on. It's a public discourse. Mm -hmm. So, but I need to get there so that I can do that portion of my job. And it turns out Pat got suckered in too. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I said hi. Thank yeah, you guys. Yes, thank you. Hey, Joe. I might see you. Tell when I said hi. Oh, hey, hey, okay. Sort of That's right. Thanks, Pat. Yeah. Very, very important. One suggestion, I know you guys want to email all these people. I don't suggest that. Yeah. I suggest one newsletter. I suggest you put it on your web page. We have two web pages for it. You will not miss everything. That's what I was going doing right I now, would, looking at I would not. Let them go to it. Yeah, I would not. Because if you this. miss somebody, you're, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> yeah. You're, and yeah. what else? You will, if you start doing individual emails, you are going to go down these rabbit holes. And if you go down these rabbit holes, you will never get out. Our meetings will be last all night. No, amazing. it was not. Mm -hmm. and, and the just, person sending the email, you, sorry, you, you we don't will, need you will get, it's going to be this constant back out. and forth, yep. and mm -hmm. he'll never get work done. Yep. 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 And he's got to get his other work done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. You can just put up like a newsletter or report or whatever. Here's the link. Here's the link. Updates will be posted, but you want them to come from one source and then one source because that allows them, everyone gets the same information across the board. Very good. Very and good. everyone, mm -hmm. you know what else? We don't exclude anyone because that would be a big no. And then you, you get down these. I, 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 for me personally, I would get probably 100 emails and I could never do my job. I would just be like. And then even if you replied to 100 emails, half of those would send him send another back. email. Yeah. And he, he just can't do it. He just can't. Well, I agree. Well, that makes sense. But again, back to what we currently are doing, we're not doing any of it. I mean, I have no problem with that. That makes it a great deal of sense. Because otherwise, just the database of keeping track of all of these names, it's, it's no. huge. Right. So yeah, you could just send. I'll track, all the, I'll track them all. It's not a problem. But once you sit down with what you want to say, you kind of looked at your topic of, here's our schedule of game plan. We plan to do. This on this date, this date, this no date. Dates, no dates. Well, you could do. You, no. you don't make no actual dates. I, no, I no agree. Dates. No, no dates. dates. You, 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 you kind of have to say at least January, February of twenty twenty. That you can do. Yes. Yeah, yeah. First, yeah. Quarter, first, first quarter. First quarter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm saying you <laughs> have to say like. If you give first a number, don't 20, give a date, and if you give a date, don't give a number. It's not like specific dates. It's more like we plan to do from in this quarter, and then you always put on dependent on weather. But you have to put a tell them the game plan of what's going on. But that schedule, that's pretty much what Mike talked about kind of the beginning. And if you lay it out, that's a really good schedule of what we, we think you do. And make it short and sweet, one page. You don't want to be doing more than one page. And I don't think you need to get into some of the details. No, no. no. Just the general no. stuff so they know something's Something like being a done. calendar and quarterly mm -hmm. or monthly and 
And you can update this. It does not have to happen to be updated by our meetings. It can be updated on a weekly basis once a couple of people approve what. So then if we, we, once we figure out that all of the complaints are supposed to go to the clerk, that's going to be the general response is they're going to shoot back to the people. Like the clerk's response. It's like, going to be see such and such a site. Thank you, for, thank you for your complaint. It has been noted and gone into the whatever. Please check this website. Do, like, all, all updates are you know, posted. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have that thing that through our website that we can have a dedicated thing that they can just send it and multiple staff yeah. can receive. Oh, we can look into right. that. Yeah. So we can have an actual link that they can submit. Mm -hmm. That'd be very helpful. Is that a good, the big problem mm -hmm. why people aren't complaining because they don't know what to do? That's what I've heard throughout the community. Is everybody's complaining about it, but they just don't know what to do. It was, it's a little different. Like I said, it, I don't mm -hmm. think, and I think all of you admitted that it has never been a problem. No, no. this year has been awful. I've lived mm -hmm. here my entire life, and it is awful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gotten bad. But there's a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> I hope. We hope it's right. Literally, okay. huh? Because that's the light switch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It takes time. So uh, should right. I be bringing this up at the next homeowners meeting? This meets twice a year. Like I said, the last time I asked, nobody said anything. Um, now we don't get a whole lot of attendance, but my question to this committee is: should, Is it something I should inquire to the, our homeowners association? Is anybody having problems? I would or, think that. Let Somebody him, would have tried already up to you. <laughs> people come up there, called you on it, or no? No, no. really? No, nobody's. They've called. Oh, I'm not. The, I'm called. not the president of the homeowner association yeah. anymore. Okay. But Stephen knows that I have this position, right? And I haven't heard anything from anybody. So maybe you should let them bring it up and not me kind of stoke the fire. Me. Exactly. He, he had mentioned. Um, he lets people know the people that come. Probably the people that call him. After he talks to me, he lets him know what I know, which has so has he called you off it? Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. He's very diligent. He's been there since the beginning. Oh yeah. He's like, he's terrific. He's been in, involved in that stuff since the day of our. And he is stuff. truly dedicated. Yes, to he that is. Yes, he is. He used to walk his dog, and then I was a president. He would have all of the violations after he walked his dog yep. in the morning. And then I would write the letters. <laughs> Nobody knew it was Stephen. I was the PRI yeah. CK. <laughs> when, is your, when is your meeting? The 21st of uh, January. Yeah. Uh, we have a little thing going on with Muskego Lakes Country Club. So we're at Valley View. We used to be at the Country Club, but there's a little static going on with a development they want to do that we don't particularly like. They normally pulled out. Did he? Yeah, that's over. That must be why our meeting's at Valley View. Yeah, we get the next meeting going here. Mark, are you thinking that we could get together and have something put together so the city clerk could? Would the city have time to put something on the website? Oh yeah, same thing. I mean, that's what they do. Ten days, we had something. Once but we'll, we'll yeah, we will we will a day or two. It can yeah. get put up. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's not a problem. problem. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I would say, I would say yes, but I, I can call you because I'll know if I got that document to the city or not. Oh, you want me to, you to you just tell them? What's the document? The complaints or the document? The, the thing is the schedule. What's what currently ongoing? Oh, just send it right drone, to Scott. The drone flyover isn't a part of it anymore. Yeah, yeah just send it. Just send it straight to Scott because okay. otherwise she's just going to send it to Scott. Okay, but now the new complaints. Well, we'll we'll talk. We, I, there's, I think we can set something up special, so it can be very easy. Because then we'll want to get that information out to the public a little more so. Because I really don't want them contacting me. No, well, I know. We can, we can talk to, we can talk to Barb. There's a thing. There's, through our website, there's something that can be titled Landfill Complaints. You don't want to just say odor because it could be something else, right? Okay, quickly, I'm going to just jump ahead because more people have to leave. In terms of the request of Franklin, Landfill Committee wanting to hold a joint committee hearing to quote unquote troubleshoot and resolve the odor issues. My answer to that is no, it's too early to 
do that. Is there anybody that's in favor of having a joint meeting with Franklin before we get our issues resolved here? Nope. That's all I wanted to know. This, any point I'm just this, asking, yeah. when this information is put on the site, what's been done? Can't that just tell them they, tell well, them they can go look at it? If Marb wanted to listen, this right. is an open He's meeting, he could have sat and listened at any time. <laughs> I don't want to start a war. I'll be, I'll be at that meeting. Is this Olson? <coughs> Who, who's? Oh. Thank you, sir, and I know you will yes. represent us well. I will, and she will be there also. There you go. Or at the very least, keep you in line. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> <laughs> what, what is he representing us at? Across the street. Three of us are on that committee. Oh. Let's get rich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Retire. One thing, uh -huh. one thing I would like to suggest is that this committee has a follow-up meeting. We, we assume end of January, sometime early February, we I should have a meeting to Probably make. February, but let's just see how things go. I don't want to say, okay, we're going to have a, a meeting the first week of February, and because of weather conditions, none of this was ready to really yeah. go yet. Yeah. I think you can cancel a meeting <clears throat> easier than you can call it later. Unless you how about I call meeting. you once the drone has done that second flyover? That's what you're looking for. Yeah, it's what we're looking for. Yeah, and I'm also looking to be able to walk out my door and not be, you know, overwhelmed by yeah. this obnoxious smell. That's really what I'm looking well, that's for. That's what I'm saying. That's going to give us the time that we need to get back into all the wells and into the horizontals. Then we'll do the flyover. Yeah. The drone fly. And we'll, I'll have a little report for you. Or you can, you, email it to, you can email oh, yeah. it to you can email it to Mark and Scott Bowles. Yeah. Whatever report you um, put together. Well, you do you have an anticipation yeah. date of the flyover? I'll February. I don't have a date yet. Okay. So, in terms of the next meeting, we want to look at a special meeting for this committee in February. Late for, wouldn't you give it Late. Yeah, give it a yeah. month I think we should from the 20th of January should at least give it a month and be, I think by then we know late it's February working. It's okay working. yeah and well, what is February. when is our next meeting April, April 6th that's way if, out there if in first week of March we don't have great results and reduced order you can call a special meeting to see what's going on also you mean yeah, another one well, I would say if you want to set up a special meeting, you should do it the first week of March, and tentatively, and that gives them time to get through the month of February and do whatever it is they're going to do. Yeah, we're right, but the weather could be around here. Yeah, and then if, if it's not completed for whatever reason, we can cancel that special meeting the first week of March. Okay. Sounds good. Is first week of March okay with you and your schedule? Yep. Because you've got the one that's most. Yeah. All right. Yeah, look at the Uh, sir, is it okay? <laughs> and what part of her? She might have another scare. <laughs> <laughs> but she'd be looking for somebody to talk to, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So we're looking at uh, March 2nd? Does that make sense? Okay. I assume that's Monday? Yes. Tentatively right now, I would say yes. Okay. So Tentatively March 2nd meeting. March right. 2nd, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll can email everyone if that looks okay. Five o'clock? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, is there anything further on order? Mike, do you have anything further that you think we should be aware of? Okay, anybody else have any further questions on order on what we're doing now, status? Just a comment, I'm glad we're still moving forward. Because yeah. October, November was bad. Oh, yeah. There was slight improvement in December, so we're going the right direction. It was actually when the weather warmed back up that it became huge north of here. South is okay. We don't care about north. We don't care about south.
Yeah. I'm always open for the wind out of the north. <laughs> okay. Payments from committee funds, they were attached to your agenda. I'm assuming there's no comments on that. Communications and other business is authorized by law. Okay, upon hearing nothing, any more citizen comments? Nope. I think we're all set. Looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay, one of you is the second. Rolly, thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned at 6.54. Ooh, I had time so to get